Hi, I'm Shannon Whiteside, Program Director for the Alvieri, and I'm here today with a few of our curriculum developers, Carrie Forney, Catherine Avery, and Danielle merritt Sinceri. This is the ninth year of the Alvieri, and we are so excited to give you a preview of some of the books we'll be reading for the 24-25 school year. If you want to learn more about the Alvieri, you can browse our viewbook, which is linked in the video description below. The viewbook also contains a free term of composer study lessons for you to try out. I want to reiterate that we are just highlighting some of the books that are part of our curriculum. There are many more. I also want to remind you that although the books are an important part of the lesson, there is more to a lesson than reading and narrating books. Mason talks about the four components of a lesson. Every lesson should begin with a recap of the previous lesson, then some kind of introduction to whet the appetite of the students or to give them some more context for what they're about to read, then the reading and narrating, followed by a short discussion. Our lesson plans provide those components to help you set up the lesson, look at a map or ask a question to get students thinking about the topic, and we also provide optional discussion questions and links to learn more. Yeah, I'm thinking about the quote, Shannon, uh, about an education being books and things, too. It's like we can highlight the books here, but some of the things in the lesson plans themselves and also, you know, the materials and supplies, it's, they're a little bit harder to highlight in a video like this, but they're there. Um, but before you we jump into the rest of the books here, uh, we also wanted to encourage you to just take a minute and watch our videos on how we choose books. Um, we cover questions that we ask ourselves um, on when we're deciding books each year. Um, and that way you have the background to understand our goals and you also have the information you need to decide how to tailor the curriculum for your students. So we suggest you click over to those videos now and we'll see you back here soon. All right, so let's begin with Bible. Charlotte Mason said that of the three sorts of knowledge proper to a child, the knowledge of God, of man, and of the universe, the knowledge of God ranks first in importance, is indispensable and most happy making. She didn't want Bible lessons to be moralistic and children to feel like the Bible is a list of do's and don'ts, but she wanted each Bible lesson to give a new thought of God and new hopes of heaven. And when students are young, we want them to come to know God through these stories. And therefore, in grades one to six, they read through selections of the Old Testament narratives and the Gospels. Then from seven through high school, students read through the whole Bible chronologically with the aid of Bible resources and commentaries as appropriate. Students in fourth through sixth grade are doing the same lessons as the third graders, and they will be reading Genesis next year. Herein is Love is a book that we have as a resource that can be read aloud or read by older students before or after the readings of the verse as indicated in our lessons. The author's purpose falls nicely in line with Mason's purpose of not using the Bible as a rule book, but as the message of who God is and why we can trust him. The author does a great job of helping us see the overall view of the passage and how it teaches us about God's plan that he is carrying out, which began in the book of Genesis. And for New Testament, we are studying the book of Mark. Mark's gospel portrays Jesus as constantly on the move, interacting with various people. Therefore, we wanted to highlight that aspect and help our students better understand the geography of Israel and locate all the places Jesus went. That is why we are using this book, A Walking Tour of the Gospels. It is written by a professor who has spent much time in the Holy Land. And in this book, he guides students to a greater understanding of the places Jesus walked, taught, and performed his miracles. Through short descriptions of the places, color photos, and maps, this book gives students a better sense of the geography and culture of the land of Israel and therefore help them understand the Bible better. That's such a great find, Shannon. I mean, what an exciting time to be able to introduce you know, the children to what the land of the Bible actually looked like. I mean, there's so, you know, we think we live in a time when we have so many new archaeological discoveries and things that have happened and 
um, things that they have found that just brings that whole world to life. And what better time to be able to do that than here from the beginning, to be able to have a, a, a good mental picture of what that land was what looked like. Our Bible lessons will also include readings about men and women from church history from the historical period we are studying. Instead of giving you a specific set of books to read, we want you to choose what fits best with your students and what people you are most interested to read about. You can read one book a term or one book all year. It's up to you. And since we are studying the period of 800 to 1650 AD, some of the books we suggest include a fictionalized biography about William Tyndale called The Bible Smuggler by Louise Vernon, as well as her book Thunderstorm in the Church about Martin Luther. And other books on our list include Cross Among the Tomahawks, which is a story of a Jesuit missionary who brought the message of Christ to the Hurons that lived in Canada. That's also a really interesting way to think about the fact that here we are in Bible lessons, but we're talking about historical people that you know, bring that whole um, time period to life as well. So it's a just a great example of the fact that you're not going to find just um, history, right? Only in and limited to just having to be in that subject area, but it's going to cross through the curriculum. And, you know, the fact that um, there are the whole curriculum as a whole, right? It's, it's bringing all of these different things to life. So as we're looking at this, like you said, this historical period um, for 800 to 1650 for U.S. history, that same time period is studied for world history for students that are grades five and up with the addition of ancient history as well, covering 3,500 to 550 BC this year. And these times in world history are filled with fascinating people, inventions, wars, voyages, manuscripts, and new books. So studying Tang Dynasty and Botticelli and Hans Holbein, the Younger, and picture study and the sounds of early instruments, Renaissance composers, Thomas Tallis and music and working on stone carving with soap and paper marbling and handicrafts, they all bring this time period to life. And so the history books themselves are not the only way that a relationship with history is made by Mason students. And we need the other elements to grow that relationship. And one of the ideas that undergirds our study of history um, is the fact that each person or people groups that we're studying, they're image bearers of God. And it leads us to consider what the commandments mean to love the Lord our God and love our neighbor as ourselves. And we look forward to the rich discussions that you'll have with your students this year as we consider these things together. So for U.S. History, they will be reading America, Our Stories by Laureen Lambert. This is a new book that does a good job of telling the story of the U.S. She provides the right amount of information to keep the narrative going, but still provides ideas and details to capture a student's imagination. We also think it's important to dig deeper into the lives of people so students can get a better perspective of how life was and the challenges that people faced. A newer book that I think our students will really like is called The Adventurous Life of Miles Standish and the Amazing But True Survival Story of Plymouth Colony. This is an engaging text that captures the characters, events, and ideas that were important to the pilgrims. And as a bonus, there is a continuous timeline for significant events and people at the bottom of each page. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect for the book of centuries. Another book we really like is Turtle Island, the story of North America's first people. The authors do a great job of intertwining the history of the different tribes and the myths they told. It helps students see what life was like in America before Europeans arrived. And for world history, fourth through sixth grade will continue with a castle with many rooms to explore the life and times of the Middle Ages and some of the people who have impacted history, such as William of Normandy, Genghis Khan, and Prince Henry of Portugal. 
We will also be reading a biography called Fine Print, which tells the story of Johann Gutenberg, who is known for inventing the printing press, which led to the spread of ideas and literacy. Fourth grade Canadian students will read the same books as second to third graders. The Great Adventure and Illustrated History of Canada for Young People provides a spine for the year. Another book they will also read is Turtle Island, as mentioned above. And fifth and sixth grade Canadian students will read Turtle Island as well, but they will use the spine, The Story of Canada by Lunn. In ancient history, we will study the earliest civilizations from around 3500 to 550 BC. The Story of Civilization by Philip Campbell is a great book that tells the stories of the civilizations of Egypt, Israel, and Persia. He intertwines historical information with imaginative stories that help the students picture what life was like for people so long ago. These students will also read The Riddle of the Rosetta Stone by James Giblin. This book tells about the amazing discovery of the Rosetta Stone in Egypt in 1799 and the quest to decipher the mysterious picture writings. That's one of my favorite books. It's such a it was such an exciting thing to think about. Like, how did someone figure out what all those little symbols and marks meant? And how did they? Yeah, so that, that's that's a really exciting book. Yeah, I like that one. Well, and I think it kind of moves us really nicely into our next subject, which is geography, because you know, we have history, geography, literature, we have all these things very nice and tidily separated, right, on the program. And, you know, I'm doing my geography lessons, I'm doing my history. But like, so many of these people, it's amazing to like, look at the maps of where, you know, where did they find the Rosetta Stone and all of these different places we're reading in history. It's like, you have to have your your atlas close by you to really um, visualize it and help it come to life. Um, yeah, like you were saying, Carrie, it's, it's across the whole curriculum. But anyway, so geography specifically, let's talk about that a bit more. So across the grades in geography, we obviously want to cover a number of things. We want students to learn about physical geography and historical geography, like we were just saying, uh, regional geography and cartography or the study of maps. Um, so our geography from starting from fourth grade on is tends to have that historical stream that's tied to the time period alongside these other things. Um, so we read about adventurers who reached historic firsts, as well as places that were significant during the time period. Um, and for fourth, fourth through sixth grade this year, we're, they're reading the same books. They'll be exploring the adventures of Marco Polo with the classic book by Manuel Komroff. And this author paints vivid descriptions of the people and the places in the different regions that Marco Polo traveled. And students will do map work alongside their reading so that they become familiar with all the places along the Silk Road from Europe to Asia. Um, and then we'll also focus on several African countries with the book, The Royal Kingdoms of Ghana, Mali, and Songhe. And this book takes us back to medieval Africa um, in the time of kings and gold and daring travelers. So that will be a really exciting book for students too. Mm. Great, so let's talk about English. We're continuing on with the Michael Clay Thompson books for grammar and composition. We really like the way that he talks about the ideas of language and the importance of knowing the parts of sentence, not just to know them or memorize a list of rules, but because it allows us to communicate well. And he does a good job tying it all together. So this subject that should be done together with your students so that you can discuss the ideas and have them articulate what the author is saying and as students start writing more narration, they gradually build their confidence and fluency with words. So we also provide copy work and dictation books with passages that come from this year's books to make this subject easy for you to implement. Fourth grade begins with Grammar Island and Practice Island. Fifth grade works on composition as well with the book Sentence Island while still finishing up Practice Island. And then sixth grade uses the Grammar Town and the Practice Town. So the, just that really it's a, a living language is what he is just so amazing at communicating and, and thinking about it, not just as a, something to fill in or to um, just quickly do and be done with it, but really 
it, it makes you kind of stop and and think about how we use words and why and how do they go together and just the whole um, what makes for a good sentence. So we're excited about that. And then talking about literature. So starting in form two, our grade four, Charlotte Mason, she connected literature much more closely with history. So more historical fiction is included in the program. Students also start to read more of their books independently. And as they grow in their ability to read and narrate, they explore other times and develop their imagination and their sense of right and wrong, good and evil, and the complexity and beauty of life through the characters in their books. Grade four and up begins reading and listening to Shakespeare. And we'll be studying Hamlet, Taming of the Shrew, and Richard III this year. Through grade, Though grade four students and those who are new to Shakespeare also have the option to start with our beginner level and read A Midsummer Night's Dream first instead. So that's sort of a new thing that we've been thinking through, just how to help um, teachers and students sort of begin that study. So that'll be sort of a staple that we have every year in the curriculum, where if you're entering um, whatever grade and you're new to Shakespeare, here's kind of the, the one to um, cut your teeth on and kind of get comfortable with. And that will always be there. But then as well, we will have the regular three that we do um, for that rotates through for each year um, as normal. But this is just sort of a, an extra help for those who are just beginning Shakespeare. Right. Yes. I'm excited about those because so many people are intimidated to uh, read Shakespeare, but you are missing out on so much uh, by being fearful of it. You just have to dive in and we hope that we can give you that confidence. And um, also our, the Shakespeare plays we're doing this year are we haven't done before. So we're excited about this new list or this new um, coming up. So we hope that you're excited about it as well. Yeah, I think it's also a fun time. You know, we do Shakespeare every year, but this is the history rotation where he actually lived. So we're studying Shakespeare like in his historical context. So I'm excited to see the connection students are going to make with, um, yeah, Shakespeare in context, not just Shakespeare um, as part of, you know, quality literature that they read every year. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so some of the other books too that we're reading in literature, we're building on the tales and the mythology that they we started in the earlier grades. So grade four is reading the Norse mythology with um, the book in the days of giants. Um, grade five and six is reading English and Greek mythology with um, Bullfinch's large tome. Um, and then because fables and riddles are just so popular in Persia and just just throughout this whole historical time period and also are just so fun for kids in this like four through six um, age range. We're also reading this little book called Stories to Solve um, by George Shannon and it's illustrated by Peter Sis, um, who he's done a number of other really beautiful picture books, um, but it features worldwide tales with um, like a simple mystery or a problem and they're just super short. So they're going to be done during like poetry lesson time, just that short little fun, you know, in the morning. And then, um, so it's got this little puzzle and then it tells you what the solution is on the next page. So I guess if you stop the video and look really closely, you'll just get a little sneak peek at that one, but <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Save it for later. So then in the historical fiction side of literature, uh, students will be reading a single shard which is just a fascinating and riveting story that takes place in 12th century Korea and is written by the award-winning author, Linda Sue Park. Um, and then another book they're reading is I Wan De Pareja, which takes place in 1600s in Spain and just immerses kids in that, that time period and that um, in the story of Juan De Pareja, who was enslaved to the famous Spanish painter Diego Velazquez, which if you were um, part of the Albury, I think it was like four years ago, we studied him. So um, bringing that back. And um, and then another book that's not strictly historical fiction um, is called The Last Map Maker. Um, and we're reading it, obviously, just in expanding kids love for literature and reading, but it really ties in super well to the time period this year because it includes a lot of themes of map making. I mean, it's called The Last Map Maker and discovery and exploration. And um, I think it will really 
resonate and develop and foster a lot of connections for students between what they're reading in literature and history and geography. So I'm really excited for students to read that this year as well. It's so exciting too. It's like there's new books always coming out on these different topics, right? Some older books that are favorites, but new books too, that just bring some life to the, to the curriculum and to the time period. And we're looking forward to, um, you know, how your, your students will be able to engage with those different ones. Right. We just want to help students build a relationship and have an interest and, and we can't be exhaustive. They're not going to learn everything they need to know, but if we can open the door and get them interested, they have the, the rest of their life to keep reading and learning. Now let's talk about citizenship. Students in fourth grade read stories from the history of Rome that will give them a foundation for Plutarch, which begins in fifth grade. Next year for Plutarch, we'll be reading Two Lives. We use the Plutarch Project to read Pompey and Thermistocles. Plutarch can seem overwhelming for some people. So this year we are providing a beginner's track for Plutarch, just like we have a beginner's track for Shakespeare. These lesson plans will cover two terms reading the life of Publicola. There will be more guidance and the readings will be shorter for students new to this subject. We don't want you to miss the subject that Mason esteems so highly. She stated in her book, School Education, perhaps nothing outside of the Bible has the educational value of Plutarch's lives. Let's look at science. In grades four through six, students begin noticing that science is an active part of their world. And so the books that we have for these grades feed into that development. So for example, let me show you a bit of Octopus Scientist, um, which is on the fourth grade program. So in this book, a group of scientists um, venture out to search for this elusive and beautiful creature. You can see the photography is just absolutely stunning. Um, and we follow them throughout the story. We share in their frustration um, when they can't find their quarry, as well as in their joy and their delight when they finally do and they get to interact with um, this octopus. Um, another one of my favorites for this grade, this one, um, this one is a really great one um, to introduce lab science. This one is Hidden Worlds. And this one we learn about microscopes and we learn about looking closer. Um, and we work alongside the scientist in this book as he just takes delight in nature. Um, so this is a really great book and it is fondly remembered by all of my students really. Um, some examples from fifth grade. This one, Beetle Busters, is written by one of my favorite authors, Lori Griffin Burns. Um, it's the story of a community as they discover that an invasive insect is threatening their beloved forest. Um, the book gives us plenty to think about um, in terms of trees and insects and ecosystems, but also about the fact that decisions about how we steward and care for creation are often difficult. So there are great conversations to be had there. Um, and I could not resist choosing another book <laughs> by my favorite author. Um, this is another favorite among my students, Hive Detectives. Um, this one is about the ongoing issue of colony collapse disorder. Um, the author introduces us to both the scientists and the beekeepers as she draws us into this mystery um, and students begin thinking about, okay, what's so special about bees and honey and, and things like that? I love, Danielle, that those books are, you know, they get, you you learn the science, but you're learning it in the context. I mean, as you, yeah. and also learning about what these scientists do. Right, so, right. Like, like this is actually yeah. happening now. It's yeah, not. Exactly. Yeah, it's not all done and finished and in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, in grade six, we still have some of those books, um, like this one. This is a newer one, um, The Wolves and Moose of Isle Royale. Um, this is a really fascinating and a bit more complex story than some of the other ones um, about this predator-prey relationship um, that really defines and manages the whole ecosystem here. Um, so grade six is a great time developmentally to encounter some of those more complex issues that might have been um, a little bit out of reach maybe for the fourth graders. Um, and stories like this let us follow the naturalists and the scientists 
um, so we can consider alongside them, right? The circumstances um, that's in, that are involved here, they let us consider why and how um, these people are making the decisions they're making. They give us a glimpse into the methods and the challenges of that work itself. So they're really just fascinating. Um, we also increase the reading level a little bit in sixth grade with books like Breakthrough. This is another one of my favorite authors, um, Jim Murphy. So in this story, we're following primarily three of the scientists that developed um, the surgical procedure at a pediatric hospital at Johns Hopkins. And this is just an incredible story. It's rich, it's very well told in all of its historical context. Um, and of course, all of our books in grades four through six coordinate with our custom lab manuals and with field activities. So y'all get a complete science curriculum. I love that, that they get the, it's like if you're, the books by themselves are so great, but then it's so much better when you're like, oh, but you're also like actually doing experiments and labs and out in the field. It, yeah. Yeah. Cause the thing is the thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'll I'll forget our lab with breakthrough dissecting a pig's heart. <laughs> so that that's a memorable one. That is actually my one of my um students she loves still years later. She she thought she was going to hate it and she just found it to be the most fascinating thing. She did not want to put it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we are so excited about the books for next year, and we hope you are too. Thank you for joining us in this preview. You can find more samples on our website, a free set of lesson plans, and more information about the Alviary in our view book and on our YouTube channels. We are so excited for the adventures that await both teacher and student this next year. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Thank you.